let's kick it off. Um, I know that you guys outlined um, having, um, I, I assume the fin finalized version of wireframes, but I'll let you guys uh, talk a little, a little bit more about that. Can somebody go before me? I want to like fix something and it's not fixed. So can someone go before me? Yeah, I can do it. Um, okay. I can share. But um, yeah, I would say like at this point, I mean, um, I guess at this point I wouldn't say like final set just because there's still like a lot, like I feel like there's like a couple of small things that we just still kind of need to figure out, but we're still um, in a good, good spot to move forward. But um, yeah, so I'll just quickly talk about changes that I make. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through like the prototype that I came up with. So um, yeah, so like following our conversation that like last week, um, it was last week. Yeah, it was last week. So I recently incorporated like a few changes like here and there for um, specifically for like, for example, like being able to sort by like most relevant or most recent, most cited, things like that. Um, the option to, um, instead of having to click on this whole thing for the, um, the specific art paper like card, like you would click on a expand, like, um, or you click on just like sort of buttons like basically pop out like the overlay and you'd be able to exit out like using this button or even like this button right here. Um, ideally, this would just slide in like an animation. I think there is a way to show that, but I wasn't able to incorporate in there. Um, I, see. I was able to incorporate some sort of like sliding um, interaction. It's still kind of rough because I looking at this right now, I realize so with things like the overlay and also the filters on the side, I imagine them to be sticky as in they're staying in a fixed position while the middle portion where those results are, are um, actually scrollable. But then I realize, so, well, for this one though, that for the overlay on the right side where you see the um, the full abstract of like it's the paper that you selected, you, could, you would be able to ideally scroll like, through this easily. Um, the thing that I had concerns with that I actually realized just now is that these like filters on the left side are they're actually bigger let's see they actually like they would be sticky and they're actually like fairly uh it's actually pretty long and ideally in someone's this at, at this res current resolution of the wireframes then you can still see my screen at this current resolution of the wireframes um i i think i scaled it down to yeah at the at the, at the actual um, resolution um these uh, filters are actually like, cut off when it's sticky. I could make them, um, let's see, I think it was this one. I could make them scrollable so that, so, yeah, so right now it's actually scrollable and you'll be able to like ch make changes. And I think um, I think on websites such as PubMed, it's actually scrollable too. Like it moves as you're moving along um, the search results. Um, but that was just something I wanted to point out. Like, you know, having all these like filters on the left side um, I think because I think in our conversation last week, we imagined them to be sticky, but then I realized there might be a lot of information on here, like a lot of filters that might span um, past like the person's um, screen. So it might, in that sense, it might need to be scrollable. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I'm going to go back to the full screen. Um, but yeah, so you, and what are some other things? Um, there's also the option to, let me close this, there's also all option to like click on check boxes so you can um okay, I need to fix that <laughs> you can click on uh, check marks like of a seemingly like relevant like papers and you can add it to your repository um this would go to like the screens in the post search phase that uh like the screens of the post search phase that Carmen's been working on I can get that to, into that in a minute but um what else this was um I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to mention um, and the other thing with like, oh, the publication timeline. So this was something I noticed, I believe it was on PubMed or uh, Mendeley, I'm not sure, but having a visual element where they're able to see like the number of papers that are published at a certain amount of time. Um, and also like the uh, gear indicators in the bottom, if they're able to like um, toggle that, so they're able to like see like all the relevant uh, papers like within like a certain time period. And they're also able to see like when, um, a specific number of publications spiked within like the number of like uh, I don't know the past century uh, the past like few years so they will be able to do that um, 
but yeah that's basically like what i have shown it's just basically like a lot of like improvements in terms of uh basically making like more clarity with like how like the interactions show like when you were if you were to click on um a specific paper you click on this button it shows like the overlay on the side um and with that said actually yeah this before i move on to i guess carmen because uh, i want to be able to show like the repository and also the the, uh, the library and then also the full page. But before I get into that, does anyone have any questions like regarding like how this looks right now? Um, I guess the it other looks thing- Looks good to me. It looks good, okay. The other thing I want to actually quickly mention, um, so right now, like, I mean, this is more of like a, I guess a visual, um, a visual um, issue, but like, so right now, so this is the original one right now, like with the wireframes, like, each individual paper is its own card. Um, and I'm thinking like in regards to other, with other um, websites, I think right now it's not, it's right here it's like, it's not in the form of a card. It's just like a line breaking between. Um, I think I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that because it's purely like a visual element, like whether it should be in the form of a card or if it's just like a line breaking between. Um, Cause personally, I'm actually pretty indifferent <laughs> from, for, I'm actually pretty indifferent in terms of that, but um, I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, card looks better to me, just mm -hmm. visually more separated. Okay. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, I can get to Carmen in a minute or Carmen, if you want to like talk more about it, but she did really great work with the um, repository and it's also in the form of a car and I actually think it looks great too, but um, yeah, uh, that said, um, I have a question. All right, go ahead. Um, does there have to be a line break for the abstract overlay? Like this right here? Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be. I I mean, I think originally, oh, with this line break, I think I had it. This is another, I'm sorry, I'm just like scrolling through. This is another variation that I had. I actually did this first before, uh, before I ever did the overlay. And there was a line break in there, so that and I just kept it. But um, I can see real quick how it looks without it. Um, and then I'm curious what what the colors of the tags are dependent on. Uh, that one. So that was something I think. Because we also kind of briefly talked last week about um, what was it called on Lion, where you're able to see like the different tags on the top, and they're all color coded. I think by like disease. different types of of terms, like disease or chemical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is yeah. it determined by how closely related it is? No, it's actually uh, the types of vocabularies where these uh, terms are are coming from. If it's a chemical, there is uh, a separate vocabulary, a medical dictionary. If it's a disease, it can be a separate one. So just separating those for, for more of a visual indicator where this um, term belongs. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why, that's what would um, determine the different colors of the tags? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At least that's like, what I the way that I thought of it, and, um, Arthur basically can, like can be it in a better way that I could have, but uh, yeah, um, that's the way I've, I've thought of it as well. So, um, which is why I think like last week originally, like these were just um, these didn't have any color, but I think um, that was one thing I wanted to like point out, like it would be able to, to help distinguish between the different um, tags of, uh, that are associated with a specific um, article, but um. I'm trying to get to see. Then how do we look up, you know, different type of things that should be color coded based on you said DCs and what else? Also the um sorry, is like the question you're asking like being yeah, able the to tags, filter these um, out. Yeah, he just mentioned that it's filtered out by DCs and uh, so medical terms. Yeah, so the, a good example, um, and I'm going to take over the screen for a second, just yeah, to ahead. showcase, um, there is this uh, line project, um, and what it does, it, it shows a good example of how different dictionaries showcase different um, 
like for for example cardiac let's see it will like heart Yeah, so it, it pulls up uh, terms from specific vocabulary, like diseases. Or mm -hmm. if you type in hydroxychloroquine. Oh. So visual-wise, I will just follow what's on the top, what they have here. Yeah, I, I think those are... Um, this is a more of a technical question if we're going to have the same dictionaries or or not and i'm not sure yet just because we it's been quite some time since we we touched the actual ontology part of the nlp pipeline but i would i would say it it would resemble something like this okay so a uh, question here like so for example say drug drug interactions um, that's not in this list, but would that be sort of of interest? Like when you're looking at, um, uh, say, hydroxychloroquine or, or any other uh, drug? Yeah. Um, and it's probably a question um, to, to whoever last touched the, the ontology functionality that we're working with. And um, not sure if we have a specific uh, drug interactions vocabulary. I think um, that would that would require some separate database. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Maybe definitely. So, like, um, oh, I just messed up something. I'm gonna retake the uh, screen, but um, go ahead. Since we're on a topic of uh, tags, I think one thing I realized. So ideally, would there be a way, like, let's just say, I mean, I'm not sure if like, it'll, like you said, if it will be like similar vocabulary, but let's just say, for example, this tag was disease. Um, now I'm thinking, should there be a way somewhere here, maybe, because right now there's like sort by most relevant, I think most relevant and um, like most, most recent, most cited, most read, but now I'm thinking like, should there be a way to uh, filter out all the ones that like of a specific tag like I want to see only the ones that are called this like are tagged diseases or I want to see only the ones that are tagged like cancer uh, something like that because uh, right now I don't think I have that implemented into this like specific screen well the and... idea was that these terms would be in your search input right so when you start you would select terms that um, that you're interested in add the ones that we suggest underneath and those would be your starting point and all of those would be um, highlighted in in the results mm -hmm. but like if you would imagine just keeping one I'm not sure if the filtering would be the best option mm -hmm. I would just say that as a as a user I would remove the ones that I'm not interested in or do you think of any other interaction here? Oh, uh, I think um, it's still something I need to think about, but okay, yeah, actually that does make sense. Um, and when you say removing which ones are like not relevant, to, well, that's actually more so happens in the, I guess the pre-search phase. So yeah, no, it was just a quick question if I'm wondering if there should be some sort of filtering system for this, but I guess in that sense, there wouldn't need to be. Um, I, I can imagine basically these these terms they would be at the top in the mm -hmm. search input because this is what happens this is what comes from the pre-search phase once you select all the terms right and then you can just um, remove those as as you see them not being fit okay that's, that's how I see it so I think um, I'm gonna see if I can just to kind of quickly visualize if they were to show up on the top like this and then oh, I'm just trying to but the from what you're describing what I'm like imagining right now in my head is just um if I were to move these to the top and if only they could be shown okay well that's very messy but if they're if there's just basically a few set of tags and they're like placed here and then um, I didn't put an X in each of them, but if they were to have like some sort of like close like um, X button on them, I could uh, easily like. Uh, yeah, if you go one. back to the the starting point where you're um, selecting those, yes, 
for so this is how I would uh, imagine mm -hmm. that input looking like and then you can just remove the ones that you're not interested in okay yeah that makes sense to me. because basically the same view just goes up to the top yeah okay yeah that makes sense but I think like with the search bar like it's this is um like this first bar right here is just, I mean, it's technically a placeholder because it also depends on like um, the screens like in the pre-search trees like Kayla's designing. So right now she's a placeholder, but yeah, um, that makes sense to me. So being able to have like, being able to close like the ones um, to remove like all the ones that you don't necessarily need. So I will keep that there. So I'll remember that. <laughs> well, but what you have on each card, those tag, it's really based on, you know, how relevant it is according to the article, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's like it's embedded in a way. Yeah, those are highlights, basically. Yeah. That these tags are indeed in in there. Mm -hmm. So you don't really close it out. Um, Actually, I mean, yeah. you could close it out as search, but not on the card itself of each article. Mm -hmm. They're just like embedded keywords. So um, what was I going to say? If I were to close, if I were to close this specific like tag over here, so then, you know, let's say that's gone. And then all, of, let's just say all of these had that same tag, but they wouldn't be removed from the search results because I hope what I'm saying makes sense. <laughs> I, I think for me right now, I'm just trying to imagine how it looks. Like if I were to close like certain tags like here, how would the results change here? I think um, they would change because mm -hmm. basically we would eliminate one of the 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 terms by which we're uh, retrieving those articles. So their search results would change, and they would definitely not have uh, the ones that uh, were returned with mm -hmm. the relevance with a combined relevance of all these terms together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm gonna look into that as like a next iteration, but um. I think with that said, I think that's just the main thing that I was going to focus on. And also trying to figure out the whole uh, scrolling uh, interaction. So I want to be able to replicate that. Um, with that said, I think I want to be, I want to make sure I have enough time for uh, Carmen and Kayla to talk. So um, before that, does anyone else have any questions on the specific part of the um, uh, user flow? Tell, or? tell me, <coughs> excuse me. Can you tell me again, maybe I missed this, please don't mind me, but the checkbox for each um, result, what is that for in the upper left corner? Yeah, if you're, um, for, so for this one, if you wanted to, um, like if you want, if I wanted to see, like if I looked at this, I'm thinking I want to add it to the, the library or repository. Oh, yeah, okay. so then I think I actually have an interaction with that in, in here, but yeah, if I were to, click on like, each one and then um, I click on like add to library. It brings me to the uh, library like repository page that Carmen's been working on. So um, <laughs> but, yeah, that was the idea behind that one. Cool. Cool. Nice. cool. Okay, cool. Um, with that said, should I stay sharing my screen? I can just follow whoever wants to speak. Yeah, to <laughs> um, I can go. I'll be really quick. My things are, I think, a little bit simpler than what you guys have, have going on. So okay. I'll go. Um, and you can just follow me around. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, really follow me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I changed this before. So, um, this is no longer a placeholder. Um, but I changed the way that this works. So the filters are still here and the search is still there the same, but I added a trending line and then this button for the measurements. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, can you see? Yeah, we can see. Okay. Cool. So this is the same, or this is no longer a placeholder, but it's there. Um, I changed the way that the search bar is. So the <clears throat> um, now when you click on this drop down, it will bring you to like this uh, drop down menu, which will allow you to parse through like articles, groups, or people or like writers. Um, I would appreciate feedback here because I tried to make this as simplistic as possible. There are sites that have like a huge drop down, but I didn't know how high of a priority that was. So I included it because it was important. Um, but does anybody have feedback on whether this should be longer or if I missed something here? 
And what what's the groups? Like um, research groups? Yeah, I think groups is research groups. Hmm. I I mean, it definitely makes sense. Um, not sure if if we would have this in the first version of of whatever we um, come up with, just because we're currently focused on articles and and searching those. But maybe um, I don't know. Anton, do you, do you have any uh, thoughts about this part? Uh, not really at the moment. So I think we could just stick to one one of the options that's it yeah okay so i'll take this out um i so okay yeah i'll take that out and then this is more or less the same the only thing was that i added trending in this um this is also the same when you search for something it will come up that way we talked about this last time nothing here is really different i had a question um does anyone have a preference for how many of these should show for like related terms? Um, I kept it at four, but um, yeah. I think it, it should be like 10 or so just because okay. of the, the di different types of terms and different things that may be related. Okay, cool. Um, and then, so there's that. Um, okay, here. So when you click on filters, it becomes a pop up. Um, I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest, about it being a pop up. I mean, it, it is right now, but I don't, to be honest, I don't love that. Um, but yes, so I click if you click on this for filters, you get a pop-up and then these were the different categories. Um, I do need to know if there's something here that's missing. Um, and this certain things look a little bit different on the search end. So for location, the way that it is here and also the way it is in the demo, um, th there's like a map. It, it's not going to be the same thing. Like that's not your entry point, so to speak, when you're running a search. So that's why that's, um, how do you say, not the same. Um, because what this field allows you to do is like input a specific location where you're uh, whatever the the person is interested in and then the same thing with the timeline so those are going to be different entry fields and then um, yeah this is what I have so far with that but we definitely have to know if there's anything missing as far as um, additional filters um, I know we said all metric score wasn't that really important so that was slashed but if there's anything here please let me know so I can add it um okay and then so that's this and then let's say you select uh mail and case control for study design then what that would effectively do is it would pop those two things in for your search so study design is identify as case control and the same thing for female um, and then you would search and then once you search, this is something else. We went over that last week. Once you search, that goes into the flow that Nicole showed you. Um, and then this, I didn't change at all, but the I wanted to remind myself to say that we don't have a nav currently. So um, up top here, we don't have anything. And I'm wondering what we can do to make it so that there isn't nothing there because i feel like there should be some navigation but it's also if, if, yeah if, go ahead. if this is like a google search like google also doesn't have a navigation um it's true but i'm wondering if we should actually um wait, wait won't we have an account because that's how you could get access to the library that you have mark yeah that's right Oh yeah, uh, I agree. Like a, a Google account, like or something. Like, I don't know what. I, we don't have to do what Google does, but uh, uh, that sort of thing. Because uh, those be are, good. yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Because there is like a there's a pattern already on these like search entry search entry sites. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. Like there aren't um, like a ton of uh, there aren't a ton of things because the point is that you're on that page to search. That's the user goal, but. Um, 
I mean, Mendeley has an extensive nav. I don't really know if this is what anybody's interested in, but what I'm wondering is if this will end up being, um, <coughs> if there's information on the current Corona Y website that would be included, uh, like where are, where are things being hosted? Because the Corona Y website right now, like I think explains what the product is meant to be um, and like who it's backed by and more about like, why why it is what it is etc cetera, etc cetera. but i'm wondering if we should be concerned with not just developing what's going on where am i right now oh <laughs> if we should be because we've been primarily concerned with like adapting like figuring out all of the features for um the literature review interface itself but if we take a step back i'm wondering okay so where is this hosted like this is hosted on a web page and what other information would there be so should i also be should we be thinking like we should also include an about page or things yeah. like that yeah i agree like uh, about but uh, yeah whether that should be on top but on the other hand like if you have um something like uh, say um if you want, uh, uh, say about uh, below, but on the top, like account, uh, you know, login and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Be because if, if this is like a safe search that somebody else is building a library on, there should be, uh, you know, way to like sign in or something, but an about wouldn't be there in that case, I think. And, and once you're logged in, like once you're logged in, then you could maybe navigate to library safe searches or something like that. That could be like a menu, I guess, like two scenarios, like if there is a login and once you're logged in. Okay, so that makes sense to me. And then <coughs> my only other question is, um, okay, so the, the point from there that I took from that is that the features that we've been developing here with these screens and the ones that Nicole and Carmen have gone through this would be user this would be like separate user testing I don't really know that there's like a giant need for testing out I mean maybe like a login screen but I think things like that are pretty simple um yeah mm -hmm. and then I think we just need a definitive answer on like is there um actually let me look at the Corona Y website. All, all of the things that are on the Corona Y website right now, if any of that needs to be. Um, I mean, we can replicate the same header uh, from Corona Y website and just uh, make mm -hmm. a separate uh, tab that is a literature review and that would open this app and then they can go back to, to any other page by having the same header. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense to me um okay cool i think we're all good there um but yeah so i think the two priority things are if this needs to be expanded on or changed um and also if nicole or carmen or anyone really can let me know what an alternative to this pop-up would be because i don't like it um i feel like there's a better way I can't figure out what it is in this moment. So yeah, I think just collapsible view under the search input would would work. So okay. kind of like making it wider and uh, placing it um, right right under the search input, maybe that way. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I think that makes sense. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, quick question. So like for, um, it's still shared on my screen, right? I'll just speak over real quick. But um, this is a small question, but like when you put in locations, can you put in multiple locations? Because right now I think this is just, right now it's like New York City, New York, the United States. So it's um, city, state, and country. Um, are you able to put like multiple locations? Like, let's just say I wanted to put, I don't know, like I wanted to include New York City, but I also want to include like San Francisco, or I want to include um, or like also like cities outside the U.S. Um, uh, I'm just thinking like in like in regards to like what we have over here in the search results. Like right now, these are locations. Like I imagine the map because I think this was taken directly from UN's like previous wireframes, and I think she took it directly from the demo. Um, I imagine like it, it it showed a map, so I'm wondering um, would it like if there, if you were to put like multiple locations into the filters, like would that also well, first of all, uh, is that possible? And then would that also show in the locations like here? 
I think uh, when I think of whether there should be multiple locations, I think the answer is yes. I don't want to make it so that somebody who's running a search is going to have like that limitation. I don't think that would work well. Mm -hmm. So I think it should be multiple locations and it should also be as broad as they want it to be. So if it's just United States and it's not specifically New York City, then I think that's fine. But then if it happened to be like um, New York City and then Indianapolis or United States and I don't know, Estonia, but whatever. Like if you were to pick those places, if it, uh, the way that that would be visualized here in this location's um, placeholder is that maybe it would be a map and then there would be those specific markers for those specific, like maybe there would be a drop pin on Estonia, for example, and then a drop pin on like the US. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I just wanted to clarify, like if you're able to put like multiple locations, but I, I agree there should be. So, um, but yeah, that, that's cool. <laughs> And then the only other thing I was going to say, and then I'm going to stop talking. So no, okay. I can talk is just that before we had talked about how this should look above the folds, like with your design, um, I think we might have to spend some time. I don't know if it'll even really be a problem on how this would look on various screen sizes and how much white space would be left. I think that this would be fine because it's like, it's not as, it's not an obtrusive design, I think. Mm -hmm. um like we don't have a hundred overlays like like that other project but <laughs> I'm still really curious to know how certain things would look on like a smaller screen um and but I think I think it would fit but that's just I'm just thinking that um yeah. I can also actually, look into that too just to make sure because I also want to be able to make sure that it keeps in different screens it might not be an issue like I said but um I can look into that um, and I think this is just my two cents. I think here the margin is really big. Yeah. <laughs> making the margin smaller would help fit, like focus on this area. Like if this were moved over, then this like middle quadrant, it's not really a quadrant, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> this middle section would take up a larger chunk of space. But mm -hmm. yeah, anyway. Yes, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, that said, yeah. Um, okay, Carmen, would you like to, like to speak about yours? Because I can just follow you on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is the page where um, your articles are bookmarked. And we were talking about, um, you know, for notation wise, we were trying to figure out, is it um, more reasonable to use just basic keywords that the person could add or do they actually write a whole entire paragraph of notes? So that's a thing. Um, when you click on each article, it will take you to the full text field. So on the left side, um, for the article contents, it's just, you know, these are all the title, the subtitle of the article. So you could click on each one just to get to each spot quicker. And um, for these tab, um, you know, these are more important things that, that someone might need to use more than often than what's on the right here, which contain like graph, reference, and related articles. And you could just like scroll to each one. Yeah, that's basically what I have. Looks good. Uh, the only thing is that we're not allowed to showcase the full uh, content of the of the article. Um, mm, okay. Due to how the the data set was released by the medical journals, so it would probably. Uh, I mean, we can show snippets by. Let me think how to not overcomplicate this. Um, snippets by how this article was retrieved. So basically if they uh, searched for um, hydroxychloroquine, we can save this um, article into a library with uh, indication that this was saved uh, through, these, uh, through this search and maybe show the highlights, just like snippets of the text that mentioned that term. That's how I'm, I'm thinking it. about it. 
Okay, so I should probably add a full text view here then. Yeah, that would lead to- And then just have abstract. Journey. Yeah. Can I um, like make a, like, I guess a suggestion up for a discussion. What if we focus on this full text view as it's here? Because some of the papers will be definitely like, you know, public, like the license would be public, like Creative Commons or something. So we could show that. But for those papers that are limited in, in licensing, can we just, let's say you, you, you have the same, essentially full text layout, but only snippets are open. The rest is just simply the text is covered up by, you know, like a typical like spoiler cover up on, on the web. And then if you click on that, then we just simply link to whatever the origin of that paper, according to DOI. So that way, like the, the whole view would be the same. So nothing to kind of re-implement and just for the, the patient solution to not to show everything. It's just to simply, instead of text, show it like, like a gray cover up or something. So just kind of like a snip of the abstract. So, so would it make so, sense so, to? So, so I guess not a snippet, but just kind of like cover up on top of it. That's why we'll trigger the audience as well. Just kind of like why it's covered. And then, you know, we, we, we tell them, you know, we can't show it because of the licenses. Like mm -hmm. the paper is not open. And now they will need to extra click. And then the next time they will publish the paper, they will start thinking about like why people need to do extra clicks to read my paper. Why not publish something, you know, like Open Science Journal or something? Again, this is just the thought. It's kind of the site tracking. Do you guys think it's a, it's a good idea or not? Instead of having this like, oh, here is a snippet of abstract or something. We can show everything else. And then you need to implement the full text view as well versus just simply having full text view by default. And if we can't show full text, we simply count, like we show it, but it's covered up like redacted, all of the text is redacted I mean, that, except the... Anton, I think that's a great idea and that's really important because a lot of people will not have access to full text. Uh, but the way, you know, like say, when you do a PubMed search, it always shows the abstract, but on the side, like if the full text is available, there are those buttons in a full text available uh, in um, PMC or Wiley or wherever. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I don't know if you want to show the full text right away. Okay. I mean, some sort of indication is certainly needed, I think. So I'll just add this full text view. So would it make sense to have PDF or cite this article then? So this is kind of will direct you to somewhere else anyways. Um. Fine, I think, but it's the full text part. Like, what uh, does it? I think that's a separate thing than a PDF or a share. Uh, whether there's full text uh, or not, like an indication or some something that says that full text is available. And but and how would you determine that? Also, like you find out. Yeah, I think uh, what Anton mentioned uh, is probably a good strategy just to um unify the the look for all the pages so the yep. worst case scenario we just link out to um full text on the medical journal and do this pop over or cover up as he mentioned and if it's available and it's a free license we just showcase the full text in there okay gotcha can i can i uh, just, like just to make like i made this like really quick like uh like I don't know, just to make sure that I'm kind of understanding like what Anton was uh, suggesting. So like if you were to be like a, I don't know, like if it's like gonna be the full text or a PDF, but if you were to click on something and it shows, like when you say snippets, it shows like all, um, like the right now, like the text that you can see here, all of these like little snippets that are, I guess, circled in red. And then, um, and then these like grayed out boxes are just the ones that you just cannot see. And then if you were to click on that, like maybe there's a message and you click on it and it basically leads you to the, uh, the medical journal like website where you, where you are able to um, get a, like access the full text. Um, is this what you mean? Like just so I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I just want to visualize that just to make sure um, I'm understanding it correctly. So. Yeah. One thing I would say also like um, 
you know, wherever that full text or something, there should be something about for supplementals and figures. Because one thing is like, suppose I want a PDF of something and uh, these different sites, they make the PDF differently. So uh, typically in uh, PubMed search, I say, okay, you know, is the full text available? And then there are these different options. And I know that PubMed and um, uh, say the journal will, will both, both I can get the full text, but their PDF um, formats are different. So that's something like putting a PDF format right here. If you have a full text, uh, I wonder who will use that and how are you going to access that if there are different PDF formats? Hmm. I, like my mic was mute, but then, uh, so, okay, so just to be clear, like what you were saying, um, when it's like, so like on websites such as PubMed, like just to like kind of reiterate what you're saying, just so I understand it correctly. So on, on those like websites like PubMed, um, you were able to like, I guess like in a way filter out like all the um, articles that I know that I can access in the first place. Um, is that where you're pointing out? Like if I were to, if there was like some sort of yeah, typically uh, what I do um, is, so when I search it gives a list I don't remember if it does so I click on that article and when I click on the article on the right like uh, it tells you like uh, uh, is the full text available or not and if it is it gives you several options like the full text is available in this site mm -hmm. it could be one site or one or more sites so it could be available in the NCBI uh, uh, site or, or in the Wiley site and so on and so forth or the journal site Mm -hmm. And uh, I know beforehand that uh, when I go to those sites, then I would be able to, um, you know, download a PDF. And I know those PDF formats are different because in the, especially if it's different, like uh, whether they insert the images, like the figures within the text or not. And some, some sites they do in that PDF, some sites they don't, their fonts and line spacings are different. So mm -hmm. if, if I know the full text is available, and I see that there are three different choices and I know beforehand that I prefer the PDF format of a certain choice, then I'll go there where I could have gone to either of the three. And uh, it's just like that. I know that one of them has a better kind of formatted PDF. The PDF formatting is different in different, uh, you know, freely available size for the same full text. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, also, kind of, I'll just put this in here just so yeah. it refers it. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Um, how about the notation wise? Um, do people usually take notes or should I just have keywords that they could like filter out their articles? I mean, this is, this is sophisticated, like, you know, <laughs> the comment search, like they're not going to do all of this fancy stuff. I mean, if you do, that would be helpful, you know, for their filters and something because um, yeah, I'm not too happy with the PubMed search. This would be better. Like if you can, you know, have uh, additional keywords and uh, or like filters or something. Yeah, I, I was just like, you know, that's the one I use, so I know uh, what's there. Okay, so. All right, yeah, that's all the question I have. I think we decided um, <laughs> that Nicole, Carmen, and I would speak on the 24th, and then the meeting on the 26th would not happen because it's Thanksgiving. So the next time we would speak would be the third. So I'm just wondering about the timeline that we set, because I think if I remember correctly, the timeline was that we would start user testing on the third. Is that correct? I think, or actually, uh, I didn't see my mommy's. But I think, well, originally what we had the schedule to be, so yeah, so next Thursday is Thanksgiving. And then um, me, oh, cool. Kayla, and uh, Carmen would call on the 24th. Uh, I guess like, you know, another, like uh, make more changes to like wireframes and, um, and also be able to like prepare like user testing materials. And I guess uh, also the prototype, like actually connecting these wireframes together. And then um, I don't think we, okay, we didn't put the December, third but this first. uh is this a call between like kayla is this would this be a call between like us three and we're just like going through another run of um on tuesday mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I think it's good for us to touch base. I mean, that time still works for me to okay. just talk about. I mean, the changes that I have to make are pretty simple. Um, I have some things in my drafts that I can just pull out and replace, actually. And then the rest, so it's like copy paste and then a couple of really small edits. So that's not really going to take me long. And then on my end, it's done. So uh, with that in mind, I think the 24th, um, I'll have those changes done. And then we were going to talk about user testing stuff, like having a script or drafting a script and like, um, I guess, setting the intention that we would connect everything as a prototype so that when we connect again on the the 1st of December, I don't know why we put 1st of December instead of December 3rd, but yeah, we I did. <laughs> I think that was just like a week after the 24th. Um, actually, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's better to just say it's it's just going to be the third, which is like the Thursday that we'll meet again with everyone and speak. Mm -hmm. At that time, we could have the 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 user testing script <laughs> done and the um the prototype done. Does this make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So prototype and the script um, and any and any other using testing materials would be done by the third, and then we can discuss that. The third is a Thursday, so that we'll be able to discuss that with everyone. Um, yeah, so right. maybe um, maybe in the background, this is a task for someone else here. I don't really know. Uh, I'm, I might know one person that could do like uh, would do a test, but she's a researcher at MIT, but she's not an epidemiologist. So she does like different kind of literature review. I don't know how useful that would be. So I think this is a task for someone else in the background to just um, – set up dates with people to actually run through the prototype after December 3rd. Um, so maybe the subsequent week, December 10th or something like that. And I think if there's a delay, um, I would let you know that, but I, I really don't foresee that there's gonna be a, a delay. We're, we're kind of past half the time now. It's pretty much wrapped up as far as what has to be tested. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the list of epidemiologists that we listed out on uh, from LinkedIn. I'm going to reach out to those. Um, and once we have the, the materials, um, I think I'm going to craft um, like a broadcast email to all the researchers and medical researchers that we've interacted with and just um, ask them for feedback. Cool. Sounds like a plan. I have a quick question. Um, so I'm curious, like, um, so what's the framework or like in terms of actual software architecture and like uh, uh, that that's suggested, like, so would you be generating the HTML or like this is just a prototype and then we need to generate, um, you know, HTML and, and all the code and everything? So well, go ahead, ahead. sorry. Uh, I was thinking we should just uh, finalize the, the wireframes first and make sure that they make sense to researchers um, before we start implementing just, you know, to, to save time and uh, not to do the work that we may have to reevaluate. Re um, so that was my thinking. Okay, yeah, 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 that's the smartest way. It's the quickest because anything that has to be modified in a Figma prototype can be changed in such a short, like a much shorter period of time. And I know my skill set anyway, um, kind of ends uh, at coding. I know a little bit, but I don't have the means to be able to build this. I can show you what it looks like and why certain things like are good. Like this is a good button placement and the margin on this is good, but otherwise I can't really do that. So that would be a handoff with someone else, um, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, no, and I think uh, what uh, Arthur also said, I fully agree. No, I think that's a good plan. Cool. So, to like piggybacking on this, so do we have like a Figma link or something for this clickable prototype? Because I saw it today. We're already able like to click through something, but at the same time, Figma contains a lot of extra information. Or we're mixing different Figma documents at this point. So uh, do we have a, like a separate Sigma link that we could send to a person that have no idea what we're doing here with just small introduction? Oh, we're building this literature review tool. Click through it and tell us what you think. So do we have that like ready or do we still need to? to I mean, that can be to put together. This? That's easy to do because really it's just the existing frames that are prototyped mm -hmm. um, are in are on one page. 
but they can be put in another they can be put on another page or they can put it in, be put in another file together that's really as easy as copy and paste and then where it will end up being pasted that link would be shared with the person that was user testing and it would only encompass the clickable prototype mm -hmm. like the interactive prototype itself Mm -hmm. And we can do that, like making a separate page or separate, like, uh, sorry, thing the file specifically for the prototype itself. Um, although, like, I also would say there is a way to just share specifically, like, one specific prototype on, um, like, our current, the, per the current prototype that I showed you with, like, with, uh, at least like, on my end with the search results is that um, it's on, like, one page of the Figma file. And I can just share, like, uh, if I were to go to that, pro if you remember, like, on the prototype screen, like, um, uh, where I was able to actually interact with the wireframes. Um, from there on the top right somewhere, there's a thing called share prototype and I would just be able to, uh, that would basically give me a link just to that specific prototype. And I would, we would be able to send that link to um, the epidemiologist that we are doing user testing with. So with that said, like there is a way to send like just the link to that, that specific prototype and um, they wouldn't be able to have access to like all the other screens that we've done that are not part of it. Um, so yeah, there's there's a way to work around that basically. So we'll definitely need to do this. I think for the what Arthur was was mentioning about making like this a blast of emails uh, to to the list of epidemiologists on LinkedIn, it will be great to essentially have immediately like this link there, so people could like self-select, you know, to participate in a feedback, because if it will be just like oh you know I will into kind of, you know, participate in this essentially user study, everybody will kind of just, you know, just disregard it. If there is a link and the message will be crafted the right way, they kind of like, oh, at least let me click on it. So they click, look through, I think we'll just get more response that way if we will be able to engage immediately, even before they agree to click on the link to just give them the link, you know. I think that's cool. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think I think we're all on the same page with this, but just in case, um, the way that Nicole and I have done user testing before, and maybe Carmen, you can chime in if you've done it differently, is that we had the user come onto a call very similar to this and how you guys have with um, other researchers that you've asked questions of. We would just have them come onto a call and then share their screen while they're on that interactive prototype and then click through it. And then the script is just meant to say like, hey, um, this is what this is, just so you have an idea of what the concepts are. But being that we're following similar patterns to what they're used to on other websites, I don't think it'll be super guided anyway. But besides that, um, that allows us to have like a real time understanding of what their friction points are, what doesn't make sense and what delights them, like what does work. So. I think it's a good idea to include the link in the email. And then if we, um, once we have them on like a proper meeting, I think we would first establish the time, how long it would take and like include that and say like, this is a 30 minute session or this is a 45 minute session. And we would do our best to like do an intro. So like have maybe one or two slides, maybe someone else can have that um, speaking part and just explain exactly what the product is um, if they're not familiar, if they are, whatever, and then go straight into the prototype and then afterward um, have like feedback or question and answer. So that's the format that we've worked in before. And I think it, it works well. Sounds like a plan. Yep. Sounds yeah. good. And I have all like, you know, with the project that Kayla was mentioning um, that we've worked on, I like, we still have access to all like all those user testing material like the script and we also had a few slides and things like that even a, um, a recruiting like for user uh, user testing participant like email like draft so you know it's we have like most honestly like um, we can just like take that and just like change things around because essentially it'll be like the same sort of format it's just different content in the script for example so. yeah yeah I agree and I think we could we could even probably make headway with it on Tuesday because it, it's really just going to be taking that and reworking it changing exactly what it is that we're describing but the structure and the timing will be similar and then we'll just be it's kind of like going through the prototype and just narrating it in, in a mm -hmm. open way but yeah I think that's good <laughs> it makes sense to me yeah cool 
Okay, that sounds like a plan. Then uh, we'll be waiting for uh, updates from your Tuesday meeting and let us know if you need anything from us. Sure, sounds like a plan. Oh, I have a final question. So once the user testing is done and like, so we'll, we'll take notes for the meeting on Tuesday and then send that over. But once the user testing sessions are done and we've like taken a step back to gather insights and really identify what works and what doesn't, and then we'll reiterate and then validate those things. Um, once all of that is done, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm curious what the handoff process looks like and who I'm handing this off to uh, for it to actually be built. Yeah, so uh, since there is a, there are a couple of things uh, in here. The actual web app, which I think Sid volunteered to to help with, and the the search and the NLP AI part of things, which uh, we had some progress on in the the recent weeks, but we had a slowdown. Um, I think it will be kind of the the combined effort of multiple people. And me and Anton will be breaking, um, breaking apart responsibilities between between those groups in Corona Y. Okay, cool. So when that phase happens, um, we'll also just make sure that everything is clearly annotated and like explain explained as clearly as possible, so that it makes sense. And then we'll just, I guess, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But okay, cool. Yeah, I, and I think I agree with the author. Uh, like, I think by the time we'll have like kind of a plan, right? Like, once we have the design, like we'll have a plan. Like, this person does this this kind of work, so we we can make things pretty clear then, like what each person needs to do mm -hmm. um, when yeah. the actual like, building happens. Cool, makes sense. All, All right. right, sounds good, guys. Thanks, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.